Welcome back to Razmafsar TV. Today, uh, I'm having here Frank and Carl. Uh, welcome, gentlemen, back to Razmafsar TV. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Both of them, as you know, are our members, Razmafsar members. Today, we are going to talk about an issue, and this issue is quite important. Possibly, first, you might think, what, what kind of relevance does this issue have Right. What kind of relevance does this issue have with uh, arms and armor or with martial arts? I think in general, it could have a relevance. The relevance is something which is about rumors and rumor management, as some consulting companies have specifically departments and units which deal with rumor management and how rumors are created, how rumors are spread and what can be eventually done to um, fight against them. We all know that uh, in all human interaction, for example, when people come together, we know rumors. Rumors, we see them when we go to uh, school. Later on, when we go to college and university, we know that in, when we go to work, rumors, right? And we know, for example, also in the martial arts community and HEMA community, full, lots of rumors going on, gossip rumors and are spread against a person, targeting a person or certain personality. And the interesting point for me is always how people keep repeating these things without uh, checking or without knowing. The precept of it is always that many people always say, I need to say that, well, I don't listen to rumors, I make up my own mind. So let's stay, stay here. And let me come to you, gentlemen, and ask you, what is your take on rumor? Carl, what do you think what rumor is? Oh, in, the, uh, in the best case, I mean, like it's uh, a mistaken impression, uh, a mistaken communication, we just keep spreading. Uh, that's even before getting onto stuff like someone is uh, intentionally creating false uh, false news. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I've uh, seen and heard some uh, scary stuff in relation, which is, uh, like you said, how do people believe this in the first place and how do people keep repeating it? And uh, I don't know the answers to that, but uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting discussion. Yes, thank you very much. What is your take on it, Frank? I'm, I'm going to pretty much just second Carl, but I, on top of that, I'm going to elaborate and think that it's done, oh, sorry, it's done a little bit more out of, um, out of malice, I think, and it's fueled by jealousy a lot of the times. That is um, my take on it's more commonality, especially um, here over in the U.S. Maybe it's a cultural thing, maybe it's a societal thing, but nine times out of ten, when I hear rumors spinning around, I think it stems from uh, from jealousy. I mean, um, I think uh, Carl and I can also tell you that at least I can confirm that in Germany, lots of these things are going on. And Carl, can you please tell me about your country? How is the status quo in Malta? <laughs> about rumors and things like that, it's uh, bread and butter here. <laughs> exactly right. So you see, Frank, it is not uh, specific to the United States and your American culture. You can see it everywhere in Europe as well, right? At least we can well, confirm well, in Germany and Malta. Go ahead, please, Frank. Well, I, I guess I mean it's more so to do with like the jealousy aspect. Maybe like it seems a little more fueled by maybe it's probably jealousy everywhere. But I guess here and like the younger guard, right? Like I'm only 32, but like there's such a there's such a stigma i feel like against people who are successful in this country like if you actually like work hard to get what you want you can't ever give people just the credit for working for it right you gotta be like oh you're lucky oh that's my favorite one like how about instead of like demeaning to what i did on luck you just say oh congratulations for working as hard as you did instead of just devaluing success to luck. So I feel like a lot of times here in the States, people just get jealous and they get envious. And the best way to like try to get revenge on someone for being more successful than you is to try to destroy their success with rumors. Uh, <clears throat> if I can go back to uh, what Frank just said, uh, maybe this might be something regarding uh, older generations too, but 
from what I've noticed, for example, uh, sometimes it's not about being just being jealous. It's also about uh, a group, a society, whatever, uh, trying to uh, enforce uh, conformity. So if anything mm. sticks out, better, worse, whatever, it's not important. It's going to uh, get get attention. It's going to get rumor on. Plus, I've also noticed that rumors tend to be uh, kind of uh, a social currency, if that makes sense. What do you mean, Car? Could you elaborate? <clears throat> uh, I mean, like you see, uh, for example, uh, ladies over at the grocery store, they'll just uh, end up spending 30, 40 minutes just sharing rumors. And, you know, <laughs> the one who is most in the know is like, oh, yeah, she, she's good. She knows everything. Uh, that kind of thing. So, um, <clears throat> actually, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's like, how do I put it? It's like, for example, if we start uh, sharing facts or whatever, you, you know that sometimes you have that one person who will go, ah, but I know this one thing more than you do, and I know this one, one more thing than you do. And sometimes it, gets to, it can get to a point where, uh, you know, you've used up all your actual facts, and then, well, you know, I still want to show off, so I'm going to make one up now, that kind of thing. Like you said, jealousy is very uh, is a very frequent cause of this, but uh, there's also these other things that, which help spread it. I mean, it's very interesting what Carl says. Actually, what Carl says it, it goes in line with uh, the human interaction with each other. You know, as we all know, you know, for example, in 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 you know, it, maybe it helps us to understand it a bit. In ethical studies, we need to first of all to talk about two things. All human beings, when because we are social animals, when we come together, we have two features which we need to be taken care of. One is obedience, right? Uh, right and one is conformity. And conformity is what you, Carl, said. Conformity has also different types. One type of conformity is I want to belong, right? And this is human nature because and because I want to belong. If someone is something is sad. And for example, someone dresses in a certain way, then I try to also do the same thing, not to, you know, to, you know, just be different from the crowd. I try to do this and this and so follow the same pattern. And we see it in all societies, right? And another form of conformity is information seeking conformity because someone we assume has certain information, we follow that. We saw that, for example, this is this you know, very, very common example used. Some we get all out of the airplane pre-COVID, of course, and then someone is walking in front and everyone follows that person because they think he knows the, the, the way. But then he stops and looks and says, oh, you don't know the way, right? This is exactly, excuse me, that to use it, this is this information seeking or sheep mentality, like the herd mentality, right? And we see it also coming. And another, so this is one one type of it is a conformity. Another thing is, of course, obedience, which is something different. So no, now, is conformity bad, right? Or is obedience bad? What is then obedience? Obedience is someone is a place of authority, and I show obedience. We we show it, for example, to our parents. We show it, you know, when we go to the military. Clear, that's the clear case of obedience. You obey, or when you go and um, different things. So is it bad per se? Not the problem. Is for example, let's take a look, a look at obedience. If you go to military circle, when your commander says shoot or kill or this, uh, you know you don't have time to lose, so do you do? But then in ethical studies, say no, you can say no. He will put you in jail. He will do this and that to you. And this where it comes that in also we have many cases in military where people rejected to follow the orders. So obedience is not always good. Also, we say it in companies. If the big boss says that, are you going to follow all the time? Right? This. So the whole idea of that is the following. I remember, without mentioning the name, so possibly people are going to find out. When I used to work for a major company, right, in a certain sector, which is considered a tough area to work for. And I remember when a person was not desired anymore. Right. Desired means, put it this way. I mean, of course, for our American uh, viewers, it's very um, bizarre because in the United States, unless you're a union member and protected somehow, uh, firing someone is way easier compared to Europe. I mean, Carl, I think, knows this situation in Europe. Right. But the way it's done in Germany is this way. Right. Let me talk, just don't say Europe, Germany. 
first of all, this guy is completely isolated. So the isolation goes this way, that first step, his email is disconnected. So he has, doesn't have a company email. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is that first he has his computer, but then his internet is capped. He cannot use it. Then they ask him to leave the floor and goes to a certain number of floor. I don't give the number. It's a certain number because if I give the number, people know which company I'm talking about. And they go to that floor. So the social pressure on these people is so um, big. And these are called persona non grata, people who are not desired anymore. Now, I'm not burning myself for saying it openly here on this channel, but this is what's happening and I have seen that. But then the interesting thing comes, this order comes from, you know, because his direct boss didn't want to have him and he cannot, or her, they cannot fire him the way he or she wants. But then there is, it's interesting to watch the conformity in this case. The guy who is, or the woman or the person who is being on, in such a situation realizes that first fewer and fewer people go out for, for lunch with him or with her. It gets less and less until it comes to a zero, right? And it's only a question of time that the mass and the pack break this person psychologically. So he resigns, she resigns, okay? So protection of your job sometimes is only on paper, but uh, reality is a different thing. Now, I, I don't want to make a case for this. Why is it done? What is done? And to, it's a management decision. And as a, well, <laughs> I just said it this, but <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned this, but it's okay. And uh, this is a very, you know, because, you know, some people come and say, oh, these things, why should these things happen? People, what should they gain? I mean, it's so naive to talk like that, right? This is only one example. Another example, if you come, you know, for example, to, let's say, to our circles, right? Do we seek conformity? Of course we seek conformity. You want to know what conformity is? What are your sources? <laughs> what are your sources? Okay. <laughs> Show conformity or we're going to punish you, right? right? Sources are common good or common goods or whatever you want to look at it. If you go that way, if you could just try to look at it and then what kind of sources, what kind of sources? You know, for example, when we look at some other martial arts like African martial arts, Mexican or Mesoamerican, sorry, which encompasses more than Mexican or many other things, or like if you go to China, if you go to Japan, you know, they, they have been handed down from one generation to the other, right? Right. And then, you know, I, I was really surprised to see that, oh, there are some trends to go and read. Uh, and there are, you know, many Japanese, no, I don't have it close to me. Where is it? I don't even know. There are many Japanese um, books on swordsmanship and manuscripts where you see some pictures even or descriptions in detail even book of the five rings has descriptions right that because people do not understand they don't practice real japanese swordsmanship in kenjutsu they think these kenjutsu and things are not real so we are going to revive it <laughs> you see <laughs> revive japanese swordsmanship you have so many different schools what the hell are you talking about right you see what i mean or you know chinese or this I mean, Okay, you see, and then people seek conformity and go. And I think in one of the reasons, as Carl successfully mentioned that, you know, and if I go, and conformity sometimes is important. If you want to have a coherent organization, people need to follow certain values. You cannot just say, oh, I do whatever I want. You know, go and work for a consulting company and they tell you, you cannot talk to that, to that, to our main competitor, this. You can, if you don't respect it, you do it only once and you're out. This is conformity which is needed, right, for cohesion in an organization. But gossip also used this conformity, in my opinion, on a different level, right? This level was, okay, now I have some news. Boys and girls, listen to me. And if you do not agree, if you do not behave the way I want, I'm going to punish you. Tactics of inclusion and exclusion. You agree with me, you're included. You don't agree with me, you're excluded. Right? And... <clears throat> 
how many times have we seen that in uh, historical swordsmanship circles, guys? Right? How many times have we seen that? Right? And um, people, you know, without uh, having a real information, try just to, um, because they want to show conformity, because they want to show, oh, look, I'm with you, all oh, because this and that. And I think, I personally think the saddest part is, even they don't belong to the same organization. Let's say one guy is spreading rumors. His name is Jeff. He's spreading rumors against, I don't know, John, all right? And okay, if he has some students who do the same, then I would say, okay, he's seeking for cohesion in his group. I understand that because he doesn't get along with John, right? Jeff or, or I don't know, whatever, or Jeff doesn't like, uh, Jennifer or Jeff doesn't like Thomas or Jeff doesn't like this. Understand that. But when this guy goes and talks to some other people, right? And these people don't even know Jennifer. They don't even know Thomas. And they keep repeating the same thing just because they want to please and, and not to be punished somehow or be excluded by him. I think this reinforces uh, uh, this type of rumors, right? Have you seen any type of rumors being spread like that, guys? So we had jealousy, we had conformity, as Carl said. Anything else you would like to add to this topic? I think rumors can also can also spread out of uh, just out of out of fear as well. Um, just fear of loss in general. Um, and that can go to any circle. You're right. That can go to either. Uh, it, can go, it can be either a job, um, social circle. I think especially your social circles are a very important one um, uh, that we tend to overlook. Right? We need our friends. We need our we need, we need our support group. And um, if you have a, a, a small amount of people in your circle who feel I don't know a certain way about somebody, uh, let's go with the typical I don't know like. <clears throat> You support a certain politician, right? This is a cliche one. If you support a certain politician or you, let's say like one thing that politician did, one law they made, right? Because the rest of your friend circle doesn't like that politician, suddenly when you said, I like the one thing he did, that becomes, oh, so-and-so likes that politician. He supports him. Like, no, you don't support them. You just like one thing they did. And then they fear uh, being associated with the person who supports one thing the politician did. It's, it's, it's fear. It is fear. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. and I was going to mention, uh, but pretty much ties in with uh, what Frank said. Uh, the way rumors snowball sometimes. But th that's pretty much exactly what uh, Frank said, except if you spread it across uh, multiple people, eventually it becomes a game of telephone and that goes like, <clears throat> sorry, from, yeah, that guy likes that politician. Uh, sorry, from, I agree with what that politician did to that guy likes that politician to that guy works for that, for that politician or whatever, you know, it just keeps going and telling. Yeah, and, and, if, and if you don't, Carl, and if you don't partake in that line of telephone, you fear losing everything. It's almost yep. like if you don't you don't spread that message, if you don't spread that word, and you don't perpetuate it, then your life is ruined. That's actually part of uh, something which tends to be uh, worrying in a uh, lot of these rumors and cases that we've been hearing about. It's uh, and we've seen this in uh, in politics. We've seen this in uh, martial arts circles. We've seen this in uh, professional circles, and so on. As soon as you uh, do not express an opinion which is in line with the person speaking, which is exactly what the doctor said, <clears throat> it could be as simple as, look, uh, that sounds out of character for that person, or uh, look, I have no idea what that meant. Yeah? It becomes, oh, okay, you're, uh, you're supporting that person, you're uh, denying the truth, you're uh, doing this, you're doing that. But it's can, I don't think it's a function of rumors per se. It's more a, I think it's a, I don't know, a way of behaving, but 
uh, it's definitely a worrying, worrying trend, which uh, ties in quite a lot with rumors. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, these, you know, as far as organizations are concerned, I mean, how can the rumor management be done? And now there's exactly what, what you guys said, what Frank said is like, it leads to cancel culture, right? If you disagree, if you don't agree with me, if you don't do that, we're going to cancel you, right? And in, in that respect, we really need, uh, we really need to mention this, you know, and then I know, I mean, you might like him or you might dislike him, but I need to mention, you know, some people, okay, it doesn't matter if we agree with him, if we disagree with him. It reminds me of Professor Chomsky from uh, MIT, where he was giving a speech and, you know, he has big, you know, he's one of the big think, think tank of the United States. You like him or you don't like him, but you cannot deny the fact. And he has, I mean, I can, as an English linguist, I can tell you that his contributions to linguistics, a generative grammar, describing the, you know, the grammar of English language and how he, and linguistics in general. And he said, God, he's the, one of the leading linguists in the world. I mean, come on guys, right? And next to it, many people think he's a foreign uh, policy analyst by education, by trade. Actually, he's not, but he has published so much also there in academic journals that he has too, right? But because linguistics is a very specific talking about English language grammar and structure, right? Or language structure, it does more mainly the English. I mean, only in you know, our guys, which are our field, we know that, right? I mean, who knows generative grammar? How language trees are created, right? <laughs> Average Jack and Jill are not interested in this type of thing. They don't even understand generative grammar, pragmatic value. I mean, what do they know, right? But um, but for us, I mean, I mean come on, guys. I and mean, those of you who are English linguists and uh, deal with structure of English language, you know that. So and uh, this is these things which we uh, which we uh, know that. And he also did in foreign policy. And one day during his speech, he said it clearly when he, he, someone disagreed with him and his students were really somehow angry at the guy shouting. And he said, stopped his students and said, if you keep doing that, I'm going to ask you to leave, let him talk because I'm going to defend his freedom of speech and his right to say something against me, right? Because this is the nature of freedom of speech. You cannot just cancel him. Right, and this is you know when we when you watch this is a such a guy as uh, Chomsky with so many publications. Right, again, you can agree or disagree, but you look the, the reaction of an MIT professor, reaction of a you know leading researcher, right, in two fields, right, not only one field, again. But in, then again, but now this as as you said, we have we are having all this cancel culture. Someone disagrees, someone has uh, is uh, of, uh, people either start to. Uh, you know, make fun of him, or as British say, mock him and make fun of him and um, uh, things like that. Or, you know, try to say, oh, this guy, and then everyone goes tactics of inclusion, exclusion, and then start to show, uh, you know, conformity, right? Oh, and then everyone keeps repeating and repeating. It gets bigger and bigger. You know, uh, like companies like uh, leading consulting companies, say Boston Consulting Group, Max McKinsey, when they do rumor management, the, the important thing, one important thing they do is just you need to intervene as fast as possible. Open lines of communication, inform the people, give the per person who is being attacked by a rumor floor to express his or her opinion. Make uh, open, you know, most of these rumors, not most, people who follow, not people who do it on purpose. People who follow, they do it because, um, because they want to show conformity. So show that, uh, that there is another thing. So this conformity is weakened, right? Try to communicate. And the worst thing they say always is, if you keep silent. And please look at this. But what did we learn? I mean, now it's maybe intercultural difference. I come from a culture, let's say Persian culture, right? It is from the West Asia, West Asia, right? Iran is in West Asia. That's my con con country of origin. Okay, I left when I was a kid, but I still have this cultural element that I learned, be silent when things are spread against you, right? You just don't need to just go and make this, you see? And I don't know if you, Carl and Frank, you can tell us about your culture, how you were raised. Don't make a fuss, you know, just let it go. My time heals, but consulting companies say time heals nothing in such a, it only silence and time.
make the rumor gets bigger. You see, guys, that's very interesting. Confront the rumor, not to confront as a fighting, but try to have information and inform people. Right? I was raised, if you don't want me saying this, I was raised more so about maybe I'm just lucky with my parents, but I was raised really to address the rumors to only the people that matter in the immediate circle. That is the issue. I have been, especially coming up on the Renaissance Fair circuit, that is rumor and drama capital. The reason why <laughs> I don't, the reason I don't do them as much anymore. Yeah. The reason I don't do them as much anymore is because I've professionally outgrown them, but I also got tired of the rumors being spread about me. And I fell victim to a lot of them, but I never spoke to anyone else who didn't matter about it. I always went to the owners and the management and my immediate and my immediate group of allies. I never spoke to anybody who believed it because in the end, unless like, unless they're going to have some kind of stock in the place, their opinion doesn't matter. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Around here, what you would get is uh, different reactions depending on the uh, persons affected, but you're going to find both uh, uh, the end of the spectrum where uh, they'll just ignore it and the, the other end of the spectrum where if you talk about it, they'll kick your teeth in. Uh, one point about uh, businesses. Uh, <clears throat> when you have uh, rumors about... Uh, Companies, even if it's just like the uh, the health of a business, I've seen that uh, sink companies right away. Just once a rumor starts that hey, that company is doing badly, yeah. if they do nothing about it, that company is going down, even yeah, yeah. if it was in a good state before that. Absolutely, rumors have uh, driven uh, companies to bankruptcy. Absolutely, car. If they don't do anything against it, you know. Imagine, just let's guys, let's face it. Someone comes and tries to spread the rumor that restaurant there serve a special strange meat of certain animal. Really? Yeah, a very exotic animal. And, you know, people always say, oh, it doesn't affect me. Do you believe that? <laughs> You know, I would think I would probably think twice about uh, going see? there at least checking it out. Yeah, you see that it works like that. Like I remember, without mentioning any name, I was so angry because you know this guy is a friend of mine. He has a restaurant and he has one of the best. Okay, again, pre-COVID, always pre-COVID and during COVID, and hopefully <laughs> after COVID, and one of the best restaurants here in Frankfurt. Really, a very good friend of mine, owner. He has. You know, invested so much, very good staff, very good, capable manager. And then when I was here and there from two or three people I heard, and they didn't know he's my friend. You know, when, when I was having dinner there, I would never go there, man. Listen, listen, what? I saw rats there in Frankfurt, in a restaurant, of course, right? And I said, well, yeah, they were in the restaurant running, yeah. <laughs> You know, when it happens in Frankfurt, what happens in Germany to a restaurant like that, they will immediately shut it down. In Frankfurt? Hey, you're kidding, in Germany, with such strict laws, right? And I just let them talk, and I said, where did you get it? I was there. You were there when? Yeah, uh, two weeks ago. Which day was it? And then they go like, uh, when you want to lie, you always go 45 degrees up. So I'm trained to read that. And then they go, oh, creative mind, right? And I just said, so you were there. What time was it? I don't know. Are you a, are you a FBI investigator? What's your story? So what time were, did you did you go alone? Uh, with my family. Kids were there. And what do you mean kids are, what are you questioning? Yeah, when I think about it, yes, you're right. I was not there. So who was there? A friend of mine. What's his name? Uh, what do you mean, what's his name? The friend of you. Uh, uh, then he gives me a name. When did you go there? I don't know. And I said, you are only repeating an information you heard from a friend who you don't know when went there and are telling me this. Why are you telling me that? Yeah, just in case you don't go there with your family. And I looked at him and I said, oh, really? I said, what? Well, you know what? The owner of that restaurant is a good friend of mine. <laughs> the guy goes, oh, oh, you see? But then he doesn't let go. He doesn't relent. He says, 
Steal? Steal what? You hear that, guys? Steal what? And this is the sad uh, thing about that, you know? We come and always say, oh, we as adults are not affected. We don't um, listen to these things. This is not correct, guys. And I think, I think we need, I mean, at least, you know, at least when I teach at the university and see, and I always tell my students and so also my clients when I'm acting as a consultant, we need to be aware. No matter, guys, if you're an academic or not, no matter if you think you're so clever or not, one thing we should never, ever forget, we are social animals, all of us. And as social animals, we are exposed to, and which is not wrong per se, and we follow the patterns of obedience and also showing specifically conformity, and then tactics of inclusion and exclusion. And once we are exposed to that, we need to be aware anytime any group of human beings come together, they're going to exhibit the same patterns. And interestingly, it doesn't matter which culture. <laughs> All the same. I have a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, so uh, this person was telling me about the uh, restaurant. Yeah. I'm assuming he didn't know the uh, owner of the restaurant, he had nothing against him, he didn't possibly didn't know the restaurant. What was he gaining by uh, by sharing that? I think this gentleman, I don't want to see which restaurant it is because I don't want to reveal more. <laughs> and uh, I think he, in main competitor, opened the same type of restaurant. In, I'm not mm. making insinuations. I'm not making insinuations, right? But, and I think because of that, then you just need to be consistent and push as in a McKinsey or Boston Consulting Group says, push for these type of things and then they spread. So you need to stop that. I don't know car, but I believe this is an intention uh, being there, or it could be either as a strategy, which some companies use, to drive out some com main competitors, which is absolutely terrible. And, and this is either then you can never prove or so, or the second could be also out of, uh, that someone is just, as you said, envious, jealous, as you guys said. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's how the rumor would have started. But uh, I'm guessing that the person who uh, told you the rumor wasn't the person who started. No. It's just a random link in the chain. But uh, again, he seemed to be very, uh, invested into it yeah i think he was just following the pattern i'm sure he heard it from some other people mm -hmm. and he just wanted to start a communication you know people give each other uh some advice and tip what to do where to go what to uh, do. i see uh, the small yes. talk kind of uh, interaction yes you see that okay if you want to go and eat there be careful if you want to go there and do this you know and i think this type of like sharing information sharing knowledge right which goes, which goes uh, like that. And guys, the same thing I know I know happens if you want to look for a job, if you want to do this and people, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. you know, and I seriously, it, it, it happens, right? It happens. And then, you know, um, one of my, uh, I mean, uh, colleagues, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, of course, one of my colleagues, I mean, she's also a member of us. Andrea works as a consultant and she always talks about something very interesting. She says, you're, Reputation is your intellectual capital, not what you know, not what you know intellectually, reputation, part of your intellectual capital. So if people damage it, they force you, you know, she said once, you know, this is from her, not from me, so I just mentioned her name. She said, they force you into a position to justify yourself all the time, right? And once people force you into justification, your mental let's say your state or your mind, when you are into justification, every step you take, the second, the third is a justification step. You know what I mean? And people then start to ask themselves, they're not going to ask, this guy maybe was attacked so often. They'll say, why is he justifying himself all the time? Right, for example, as one thing which is, she said. And I think, I think especially because we are not aware of that possibly. I mean, come on, we know that for example, they say, we need to establish a prevention strategy. What is our, pre as far as companies are concerned, right? 
We need to set up, for example, a hotline telephone prevention strategy to, you know, this. Then we need to keep employees informed, talk to them, tell them the truth again and again, again and again, right? They say that. And then they said, you need to let them give feedback, accept feedback and provide feedback, right? And then you need, this is important, take action and steps as quickly as possible, right? And then go back and pay attention to the causes. Try to find out what is the source of it. What is the real source of it in the organization? Is it outside of the organization, inside of the organization? And you know, these are professional ways to deal with that. But as we all know, as we all know, you know, in them, and that's why you know, I just thought maybe if you just go to do that, guys, 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 in historical, uh, call it swordsmanship, fencing, or whatever martial arts, historical, not historical, doesn't matter. We need to be careful of these type of things, right? Just we shouldn't repeat, okay, this guy said that, now I'm going to believe in that, right? I mean, do we really know? Do we know what went wrong? What's going on? And I think this is a very, very important factor to take into consideration for all of us in this field. Because, you know, we are growing by numbers, right? Be it um, now European martial arts or swordsmanship, African or... Uh, Persian or Chinese, Japanese, or whatever, name it, Mesoamerican, whatever, we're growing again and again, getting bigger and bigger. And I think based on that, we need to be aware of some mechanics where professional companies are aware of that. And possibly, possibly, we in this field are not aware of these mechanics. So we need to really be careful of that. Not just guys, just don't repeat if you hear, oh, this guy, this instructor said this and that. Did you hear this guy? Oh, and everyone goes <laughs> with that to show conformity. That was the main idea that I thought maybe we should have a talk because you guys have been here in Rasmussar for many years. So I thank you and contributed a lot of teaching materials, instructions, or also talks about different things. Uh, at the end, did you, do you want to add something to it, guys? Um, I, not not a ton, but just on my end, my any my advice really to people is just is just really no matter what you're in, stay calm. The, the biggest part of it, it's easier said than done, but just just stay calm because your your reaction to a rumor can make make it so much worse for you. And I wish that that is something that I would have learned when um when I was younger. So just my advice is to just stay calm and, and um, go to people you trust and people who uh, people make it work. People make it better for you and not worse. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. If I had to say anything to just be uh, check everything, don't believe uh, anything you listen to uh, just like that, whether it sounds plausible or not, check it first, or if it's really not important, just let it die there. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being on Rasmafsar TV and uh, hope to see you soon again. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Thank you. Thank you.